Welcome back to my channel, it's great to have everyone back again. In this video, we will be doing an American flag in Inkscape. So first of all, we'll go to the Wikipedia article on the flag of the United States, and we'll go to the specifications section, and we'll just click on this graphic here, make it full size, so we can see just how the flag is laid out. And you can see immediately that it has 13 stripes of alternating red and white, and it has this blue rectangle, which is called the Canton, which has 50 stars inside, 50 white stars, one star for each of the United States of America. And the flag is actually a very easy design, because all of these stars are placed very regularly. They're actually placed on the intersection of grid lines of a grid that's within this blue canton, and the grid divides the canton into 12 columns and 10 rows. And to get all the exact measurements and sizes of the flag, then we just go back to the specifications section, and you can see here that all the necessary measurements are given. So for example, if the height or hoist of the flag is a height of 1, then the whole flag is going to be a width of 1.9, that's the ratio of the flag. And the height of the canton is the height of 7 of the 13 stripes. And the width of the canton is two-fifths of the entire flag width. you see then it gives these letters E and F and G and H. And G and H and E and F just refer to the column width and the row height. And G is actually the same as H, and E is actually, is actually the same as F. So the canton is divided into columns of equal width and rows of equal height. And it does indeed specify that the height of one of the rows is one-tenth the height of the canton, and the width of one of the columns is one-twelfth the width of the canton. So there are indeed twelve columns and ten rows. And also, very importantly, it gives this figure here, k, and it gives this value of k as being four-fifths the width of a stripe. And so to see what k is, we go back to the graphic, and we see, and we see that k is actually the diameter of a circle that inscribes one of the stars. And that diameter is four-fifths the width of one of the stripes. So that's a really important measurement because it gives us the exact size of the stars. To draw a star the right size, first of all you have to draw a circle that's four-fifths the width of one of the stripes, and then you inscribe a star, a five-pointed star, within that circle so that each of the star's points is touching the circumference of the circle. And you place that object so that it's centred where the grid lines of the canton intersect. So, we have enough information to get started making our flag, and just like I did with the tutorial for the Australian flag, I'm going to convert all these measurements into a cheat sheet for you. The cheat sheet is right here, that has all the measurements such as the width and height of the flag, uh, the grid spacing, uh, the length of the blue canton and the height of the blue canton, uh, the diameter of the star circle, all of those have been converted to a coordinate system that Inkscape can easily utilize. So, without any more further ado, let's go to Inkscape and let's get started. So first of all, in Inkscape, we'll just go to File, Document Properties, we'll do our sizing by going to the Page tab, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create the flag in a rather counterintuitive way, because rather than starting with the whole flag and then drawing the stripes and then drawing the blue canton and then drawing the stars inside it, I'm, we're going to be working inside out. We're actually going to do the stars first, then do the canton, and then do the stripes. So we're actually going to start with that k value, which is the star diameter of 240, that is the diameter of the circle which inscribes the stars. So, on, so in the Pages tab, we'll choose a display unit of 
pixels. We change the pixels with 240 and height 240. Then we will choose a background color of a pale cyan. We will turn off show border shadow. Then we will go to the grid section, create a new grid. We're in grid units of pixels, and we will choose an X spacing of 120 and a Y spacing of 120. And we will do major grid lines every single grid line. Then we will go to snap and we'll make sure Snap to Grid is turned on. Then we'll choose the black colour, we'll use our Circle tool, and we'll draw a circle across the whole page. So, from the top left corner, wait till you see the snapping crosshairs, then drag until it snaps again, and the bottom right corner, release the mouse, and you've got your black circle. Then we deselect that, and then we go to the Star tool, and we choose a white colour, we make sure we have five corners, and this time we will choose a spoke ratio of 0.382. And the reason why we choose that particular spoke ratio is because if you look at the flag graphic, you see that you'll see that each of these five pointed stars are stars which have the leading edges of the rays flush with the sides of the pentagon within in the center of each star. So each star has a flat, it looks like its shoulders are completely flush. And to get that particular shape to the star, you need to use that spoke ratio of 0.382. And for anyone who's interested in how we got that particular number, there's the maths which shows how we get to it. And so then we just move our star tool to the center of the page until we see those words appear, which means we're snapping to the center. And then we just draw a star until, until we snap to the top midpoint. Then we press Control A, right click, and go group. So there's our first star done. Then we're going to go back to Document Properties. Go back to page, and we are going to change the width and height of the document to the width and height of the blue square. So the length or width is 2964. and its height is 2100. Then we go back to the grids, we remove that grid, create a new grid, and we put the X grid spacing as 247, and the Y grid spacing as 210. And we'll put major grid lines every single grid line so that we have a nice clear grid system. And that gives us that division of 12 columns and 10 rows. Now, the next thing we have to do is close our document properties and right on the rightmost toolbar here, which is the snapping toolbar, Make sure you have this item here selected. This is snap bounding boxes. You have to have that enabled. And then go four squares down until you see this option, snapping centers of bounding boxes, and enable that. And what that will do is when we then move that star object, that star and circle object, it will snap its center to the grid point intersections. So what we'll do is we'll go up to the very first grid point here and have it snap. 
Then we will copy that star, Control D, and we will drag it to the other side of the canton and place it there. Just one column in from the rightmost side of the canton and one row down. Then I'm going to select one of the stars, press Control C, and I'm going to press Control V four times, one, two, three, four, to create four more copies of the stars. Then I'm going to select all of them, Control A, and I'm going to go Object, Align and Distribute, and we're going to choose this option here, Distribute Centers Equidistant Horizontally. And then we are going to choose this alignment option, this one here, center on horizontal axis. And you notice that's actually thrown off our vertical positioning, but that's all right. With all of them still selected, we just drag the first star and all the rest will follow and just have it snap again to the center. And all of the rest of that row of stars will be positioned correctly with their centers on a grid line intersection. And notice that each of the stars is centered on a vertical grid line that is actually every other grid line. So what we're going to do next is, with all of those still selected, we're going to press Control D to copy that whole row. And we're going to zoom into the first star, drag it, and it will drag that whole copy of the row and we will center it and we will go in one column and down one row until it snaps to the center there. And we've created two rows of the stars. Then we will press Control A again, Control D, and now we've copied two rows. So we repeat the process. We just drag down until that first most star snaps like that. Then Control A again, Control D, and repeat the process. Sometimes you may just have to zoom in a bit to make sure it snaps. It can be a bit finicky because sometimes it wants the corners to snap, but we want the center to snap. But if you're having a bit of trouble doing it, just zoom in and it'll become much easier. And then we just need to copy one more row. So we just select the whole bottom row of stars, Control D, move them. And then select the rightmost column and delete it. And we've ended up with our 50 stars all correctly placed. So what we'll do now is we'll draw the blue background. So we'll just choose a random blue to start with. Draw the rectangle from one corner to the other. Then on your keyboard, press the end key to send that blue rectangle right to the back of all the stars. Now we'll give it the correct shade of blue. So if we go back to the Wikipedia article, and this is also in the cheat sheet, and we go to the colors section, uh, the easiest thing to do to get the correct color is to copy this hexadecimal code here. And this is also in the cheat sheet, so you don't have to worry about it. So right click on the rectangle, go fill and stroke, Go to fill and just paste in that code. And then to get rid of all those black circles, you just select one of those objects, right click and ungroup. Then make sure you select the black circle and not the white star. Then go edit, select same, and fill color. And it selected all the black circles. And then we just press delete to get rid of them. And there you have it. There's the most difficult part of the flag complete. That's the blue canton with the white stars done. 
So now we go back to document properties again. Go to the page tab and we make the width and height the width and height of the flag itself, which in the cheat sheet you see the width of the flag is 7410 and its height is 3900. Then we go to the grids and we choose a spacing x value, which is the same as the width of the flag, which is 7410, and a spacing y, which is 300, which is actually the width of the stripes. Then we will select the blue cantle on the stars and make sure they're grouped. And we will just move it up to the top left corner. Then we will choose our rectangle tool, choose a random red to begin with, and we will just draw a red stripe. And it will just snap to those grid points. And then again to get the colour right, we just go to our fill and stroke, go to our fill properties, and we will use this red value. Actually, I'll show you it in the cheat sheet. There it is, right there. And the blue value is there too. So we just paste that hexadecimal code in, and we have the exact shade of red it should be. Then I'm just going to select that stripe, press Ctrl D to copy it, and I'm just going to drag it to a new place, select that, Stripe and the other stripe, press Ctrl D again. Now we've got four stripes. Select all stripes. Ctrl D again. Now we have eight red stripes, which is actually more than we need. So we delete this bottom one. Then we select the Canton object, the blue rectangle with the stars, and we press home on our keyboard to bring that to the front. And then we'll draw a, re a white rectangle across the whole document, and press end on the keyboard to send it right to the back. And there you have it, we've created the American flag. We can just turn off our grid to view it a bit better. And there it is. And this flag is very accurate. I've actually experimented earlier with taking um, this graphic from Wikipedia, this flag graphic here, and actually overlaying it on top of this creation, and it matches perfectly. If you put the two flags on different layers and you turn one layer on and off, its visibility on and off, you can see no change in the graphic. So this is actually a very accurate representation of the American flag. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe or leave a comment, and I will see you in the future. Be happy and be well. Goodbye.